The question of the iPhone 11 versus the iPhone 11 Pro might seem like a pretty simple one. One is more expensive and made of nicer materials, while the other is a little bit cheaper and takes a step down in materials and loses a couple other features. The logic should be that the expensive one is going to be significantly better. And so, if you can swing the money, you want to get that one right. Well, not so fast, my friends. It's not quite that simple. When the iPhones were released last year, I was excited to get the iPhone 11 Pro or Pro Max, and I ended up getting both and returning one. I get excited every year getting those new fancy iPhones. They're the new high watermark of the iPhone world, but after a while, you know, the, the glitter fades. The honeymoon period is over. The phones are no less nice than when you get them, but this year the frosted matte glass back still felt great. The battery life, even on the smaller 11 Pro, was so much better than any iPhone battery had ever been. The screen's gorgeous OLED. I decided to stick with the smaller iPhone Pro this year, and from launch day to around February, I really enjoyed using it. Then we started to hear some grumblings about prices for some of the phones that are coming out in 2020. And I, th I thought to myself, like, this is starting to get a little crazy. When Apple first priced the iPhone 10 at $1,000, I think there was part of me that thought, well, this is a fluke. It's a one-off thing. It's a special edition kind of deal. Of course, I realized in my conscious mind that once we broke that $1,000 barrier, there was no going back. The iPhone 10 was the canary in the coal mine. It's success was the opening of the floodgates for everybody to charge a thousand dollars for their phones. Once smartphone manufacturers found out that people would in fact go <laughs> to four digits to buy a smartphone, the cat was, as they say, out of the bag. I'm mixing all kinds of metaphors here, but stick with me. The iPhones since then have stuck it around a thousand dollars and uh, 1099 to start with the bigger one. The only real compromise being that you have to start at 64 gigabytes of storage to get that lower price point. And other smartphone manufacturers have followed suit and released flagship phones at those prices and maybe even a little bit more from year after year. In 2017, there was a real question whether or not the iPhone 10 would fail. I made a bunch of videos where I asked that question, but of course we all know how it turned out. The iPhone 10 was a huge hit and Apple made a gazillion dollars. So by 2018, about every smartphone manufacturer was had a phone that was pushing the thousand dollar price point. Just about, just about everyone. In that year, I called the Galaxy Note 9 the only phone that actually lived up to that price point. It had everything and a little bit more. It was my 2018 phone of the year, but some strange things started to happen on the way to the bank vault with all that cash. Apple that, that year decided to release the iPhone XR, a cheaper, less fancy version of the iPhone in a bunch of different colors with an inferior LCD screen and slightly less premium build materials. To my mind, this had all of the earmarks of the iPhone 5C written all over it. If you are old enough to remember the iPhone 5C, it was Apple's first attempt at a budget iPhone. It didn't go so well. Uh, the 5C didn't have the same internal specs as the, as the 5S that it was contemporary with. It really wasn't all that cheap. It got cheaper when no one bought it and became a favorite of older people and, and kids. Uh, but I didn't think we'd see another budget iPhone again for a very long time, if ever, considering how bad the iPhone 5C failed. I shouted from the rooftops that the iPhone XR was going to fail just the same way as the 5C, but... It didn't. It went on to be Apple's best-selling phone in 2018. Even I, with egg on my face, switched to the 10R halfway through the year just to see what it was like, and I really enjoyed using it. I didn't experience really any drop-off. I didn't feel like I was losing anything because the stainless steel rails weren't there uh, and it was aluminum instead. Even the subpar screen with its resolution below that 1080p mark looked really great. And to my eyes, the OLED screens, while they are really great on the more expensive phones, I, I mean, are they really great to the tune of hundreds of dollars? That's, that's my question. A lot of this kind of stuff is subjective. I'm sure there are a lot of people who disagree with me, which is fine. But a funny thing happened on the way to Apple's 2019 line of phones. Whereas the iPhone XR was separated out as something different from the iPhone, its successor, the iPhone 11, was positioned as, well, well, the iPhone. This has been the thing. Back in the old days, there was just the iPhone. For a bunch of years, the, it was the only model, it was more expensive than the other phones, and if you wanted it, you had to pay the money. It never went on sale, 
Never got to buy one, get one free. Never, you know, dropped in price after a couple of months. It cost what it cost. And if you could pay it, then you got the status that came along with it. And if not, then you were whatever. Then came the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. I guess in order to have that same cachet, you needed to have the bigger one. In 2019, the iPhone 11 was positioned as the iPhone, not as like the side chick or some cheap date like the 10R was. But the funny thing was the iPhone 11 was cheaper, cheaper than the iPhone 10R by 50 bucks. The phones that had previously been the iPhone were now the iPhone Pro models. We can get into whether or not they're actually pro or whatever and some other video. Maybe we've already talked about it. It's a long discussion. They made the cheap phone this year. They made the cheap phone the iPhone and they made it more affordable for more people to get. This, this coming from a company that charges $2,000, $3,000 more for computer storage upgrades <laughs> when you could get it for so much cheaper on the regular market. And they made the iPhone cheaper. I don't know what they've been smoking out there in Cupertino, but I can't complain about the outcome. The iPhone 11 is the iPhone. Maybe it just hasn't sunk in yet. The iPhone 11 Pro, Pro Max are the upsell to the iPhone 11's iPhone. They're the little bit extra if you can pay for the flex of having all that fancy stuff. But in day-to-day -day use, there's absolutely no appreciable difference between the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro. I know, I know. I actually know because I sold my 64 gigabyte iPhone 11 Pro and bought a 256 gigabyte iPhone 11. And I haven't had a single moment where I said, I wish this phone had stainless steel or nicer anything. It, no, there's never been a moment where I felt like I was lacking anything. Yes, it does lack one of the camera lenses from the more expensive models. But if I'm honest, I don't think I ever used the telephoto lens while the ultra wide lens that was added this year has been a godsend. Yes, the materials are not quite as nice as the more expensive models, but I will say this. The iPhone is sturdier, more confident in the hand, even better built than a lot of the phones out there uh, that are hundreds of dollars more from other manufacturers. Yes, the screen is worse on paper, but in practice, I've never felt like I was missing anything. I put phones side by side. It doesn't really look all that different. I'm not precious about this phone. When I handle it, it feels like a tool. It has all the same insides of the other phones and it doesn't suffer in any kind of performance loss. It is a really good phone. Look, I'm not saying the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max aren't incredible phones that, you know, outstrip the iPhone 11 in, in many different ways. They are, but so is the iPhone 11, and it's hundreds of dollars less. If your wallet can't withstand the $1,000 plus hole a Pro model will put in it, and your pride can withstand the ding that it's going to take by carrying the peasant iPhone, then you're getting a heck of a lot of phone for a lot, lot less and you'll likely never even know the difference. When Apple made the cheaper model, the iPhone this year, they were telling us something. They're going to make quality products at more reasonable prices that don't suffer by comparison against their more expensive phones. The iPhone 11 is the iPhone. Apple, the company who never missed a chance to upcharge us for the dinkiest features ever, suddenly became the phone manufacturer that wants to give you value for your money. It is a crazy world.